Welcome back to Simright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew a hoop skirt. So this is called a hoop skirt, what you see me right here, wearing right on my waist. You can use this hoop skirt to wear any ball gown of your choice. So here you can see I've already made the hoop skirt and this is what I came in with. This particular hoop skirt was called 180 or half a circle degrees, okay, flay. If you want it a little more bigger to carry a bigger ball dress, you'll be cutting 360 degrees. So I cut 180 degrees here just to show you what a hoop skirt making looks like. So you can see I'm wearing this hoop skirt on my beautiful dress. I want to wear a detachable ball dress okay so i'm going to remove my hoop skirt first then wear my detachable ball dress so this is the technique to wearing your detachable wedding ball dress and a hoop skirt with it so if you actually want to wear a detachable ball dress you can see how the detachable ball dress is looking right there so it's a pleated detachable ball dress but then to wear a hoop skirt you are going to go into the hoop skirt from the waistline just as you can see me do right here so i'll get someone to help me tie the hoop skirt at the back so this hoop skirt is actually made for so many sizes okay so the way you are going to learn how to make this hoop skirt any size can wear it so i'm wearing the ball dress right now the detachable pleated ball dress on the hoop skirt and you can see it spread a little more than it is before it gave it a little ball look but if you want it to have a very much much ball look cut 360 degrees and follow this technique so right now we'll jump into this tutorial right away so this is the ball dress looking so beautiful so stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you so to make this ball dress, I'm making use of a hard net. So you can use a hard net, you can use a cotton fabric, you can use a fabric, anything to make this hoop skirt. So, but I prefer to make use of a hard net. So the hard net I have here measures three yards, three yards. So I'm taking the measurement of the three yards right now. But if you want it a little more longer than what we have right here on the video, you can use three and a half yards of your hard net. So hard net comes at length of 60 inches. So the first thing we are going to do is to fold the yardage part into two. So if you fold the three yards into two, you will have one and a half yards. So the length comes at 60 inches. I'm trying to take the measurement to be sure I have the 60 inches length of my hard net. So after folding it into two, the three yards into two, we'll begin to mark out our radius, okay? So I'm still folding. You can see the open end and you can see the folded end of my hard net. So I'm trying to arrange it very well before we take our calculation. So for the calculation right here, I'm working with waist 36 and I'm dividing by 3.14, which is constant, and I got 11.4. So the radius I'm going to cut with right now is 11.4. So this 11.4 I have, I'll add 4 inches for my ease. Let me say for any size, if you want to any size to wear this, just add 4 inches to your radius. Okay, so by the time we rope it, any size can wear it, okay? Alright, so these 4 inches I added to it is just to make it uh, easy. By the time we pass our rope, you can drag the rope to any waistline. So whatever your waist circumference is, divide by 3.14, which is a constant. The radius you get, add 4 inches to it. So the radius I'm working with right here is 15 inches because 11 Point four plus four will give me fifteen inches, but I neglected the four inches because it's just um, um not really up to five inches to approximate. So now I'm going to measure fifteen inches on the folded folded part of this just to cut a half circle. So I keep marking fifteen inches, fifteen inches like that till I get to the open end, and that will serve as the radius. 
So now I'm going to go ahead to cut out what I have right here. But before that, we are going to take the measurement of the length of this hoop skirt. So the length of this hoop skirt I'm working with is 44 inches. I'm working with 44 inches. So 44 inches gave me the length you saw from my waistline right there. But if you are working for a taller person, you can just add some hard net to your fabric. You can even use a fabric, okay? You can just get a fabric that has a longer length, okay? If you are working for a taller person. So right here, I'm marking out the length of this hoop skirt right from the radius, just like we cut 180 degrees. That is exactly what I'm doing right here. So I'll keep placing this, as you can see, I'll keep placing it all the way from there till I get to the end of my radius. So here I have my radius for the upper piece waistline and I have the length completed. So the next thing we are going to do is to start cutting out the radius. So I'll just go ahead and cut out the radius as you can see. So I'm going to cut it out right there. So after cutting the radius, I'll go over to the length and cut out the length. So we'll be able to have 180 degrees flay completed. So this is the, the what we have on fold right now. So but the next thing we have to do is to start marking out the distances. So you, you are going to take the length of what you have and then divide it according to the number of rings you want. So for me, I'm using 8, 8 inches because I need 5 rings. So I keep marking 8, 8 inches, okay? So I'll mark 8, 8 inches like that, like that, like that. So this is the starting end of my 8 inches. So I'll keep marking the 8 inches. I'll keep marking it. So you can see how I'm placing my tape to mark out the 8 inches. So after I'm done marking this 8, 8 inches from the radius, I'll begin to connect them. So this is the part I'm going to pass my bone in or pass my iron so it depends on what you actually want to use to create these hoop skirt some people use iron string some people use boning so the boning the disadvantage between the boning and the and the iron string is that the iron is firmer so if you can get an iron string is actually firmer so you can get that one from the store if you are living in the states but if you are living in africa I don't know if we we'll have this. You can use a boning, a plastic boning. Of course, I use the plastic boning for this. So I'm, I'm done marking on one side. So I'm going to place, turn it to the other side and continue the same process. So I will turn it to the other side right now. And I'll also mark my 8, 8 inches. Okay. I'll keep marking my 8, 8 inches, 8, 8 inches like that. I'll just repeat practically the same thing I did on the other side, on this side. So this is what we have right now. Next, we are going to take the measurement of the rings. So from the upper piece, I'm going to take the measurement of the rings and I'm going to record them right on my paper. So here I'm recording what I measured. So whatever measurement you have, please just write it down right there. So I'm going to take the measurement of the second ring and I'll record it. So I've recorded the first ring. So whatever measurement you get here will be multiplied by two. Remember, this flay is still on fold. We have not opened it up. So I record the second one and I multiply by two as well. So I'll go back to the third one. I'll take the measurement and record, multiply by two. So after recording the third one, I'm going to record, mark the fourth one and the fifth one. So, so this is my record and I've cut out my strip. I use a dull face satin fabric to cut out this strip. So the width of my strip right here measures 1.5, okay, 1.5. And the length of my strip, I cut as much strip as possible. I use two and a half yards of dull face to cut my strip. So here is the measurement of my rings. You can see I have the first one at 35 times 2, which gave me 70. So I used two and a half yards anyway. So each of this 1.5 inch width of my strip, the length is 90 inches. So this 90 inches will be able to cover the first strip completely. 
then i'll begin to join the second ring third ring fourth ring like that like that so i used two and a half yards and cut at one and a half 1.5 inches width to the length of 90 inches length so make sure you have your calculations accurate as you can see me have right here all the rings to the fifth ring has its calculation so I'm going to start from the lower piece. So I joined my 90 inches length together. So I have 180 inches for the last one. So I'm going to bring in my hard net right now and I'll begin to sew them. After joining, I'll start from the down piece to sew. So I'm going to fold in this and place it on the line. You, you fold and get, come out by half an inch because we are going to stitch the two open ends together so make sure you come out at half an inch make a fold to it and stitch on one line so we'll go over to the machine right now i'm going to show you how to accurately sew these strips on your hoop skirt so i'm still demonstrating what i'm going to do right on the machine so here on the machine on any of the lines especially from the down piece you are going to fold first half an inch after folding the half an inch you come out by another half an inch place it on the line and then you come out by half an inch for stitching the both ends like i explained before so I'm going to drop my presser foot and I'm going to sew half an inch all the way from that point down, okay? So I'll sew to the end of it, to the end of the line. So make sure you follow the lines accordingly. So I'm going to stitch all the way to the end of the line. So following the line. So I've come to the end of the other line. So I'm going to cut out the SS I have. So watch how I cut the SS I have right there. So I just go ahead and cut off. So I cut off right now exactly on the line of the open end. So it has to match together. Then you are going to fold in half an inch. I believe you understand. So that will give another half an inch space for stitching the other side of the hoop skirt. So here I've backstitched and I'm going to come back to the other end I started with. Then I'll fold it in. I'll fold half an inch in this way. I'll fold half an inch in this way. And then I'm going to also place it this other way, okay? Then I will begin to stitch, fold in half an inch and top stitch on it. So I believe you understand the de demonstration. So I will fold in half an inch and I'm going to sew half an inch all the way from that point to the end of the other Point. So make sure you stitch at half an inch because the bonding we are using is also half an inch. So, and it's a plastic boning. So I'm going to run this stitch from that starting end until I get to the end of it. So I've gotten to the almost to the midline or the part that I have the join. I just want to show you that you have to open up the joining. If you are joining your fabric, make sure you open it up before you fold. So I opened it up and I folded it, okay? That will help your boning to pass through without blockage. So I'm going to skip stop, stop stitching until I get to the end of the other part. So I've gotten to the end of the other part. So I will still fold it in very, very neatly at half an inch and then finish up the process and backstitch. So here you can see what we have right there. And we still have the, the half inch space to stitch the both ends. So now I'm going to use this method to stitch all other of my strips, all the strips. I'm going to use this method to do that. So I'm done sewing all my strips. As you can see right there, they are looking very beautiful and wonderful and clean. So the next thing we are going to do is to put the sides together and we are going to stitch that half an inch. 
So I'll go over to my machine right now. I'm going to stitch at exactly half an inch on the side of this. So as you are folding it in, make sure you have all your strips match at the same point. So I'm going to arrange the strips at the same point and secure with my pins. So watch me pin them together right now. So each strip I'll match it and secure with my pin at that half an inch. But then you need to leave about 8 inches, okay? 8 inches for the, I'll call it a zipper space, but that is not actually a zipper space. It's just to give it room for us to, to wear this hoop skirt. So here you can see I left that part open. So we'll be able to wear the hoop skirt. So I'll start stitching from this uh, first strip. So I'm going to stitch half an inch from that first strip all the way down. So after doing that, we have successfully closed up that open side. So I will stitch and stitch and stitch all the way until I get to the end of it. So I'm stitching right beside the half an inch. Please don't stitch on top of the strip or else the bony will not have a space to be passed. So I'm done and this is the open end of that of the piece. So I'm going to fold in that open end. I'll go over to my machine and this is the space for my hoop skirt. You can see the spaces are still open. So I'll go over to my machine right now and fold only once or twice and then stitch clean up or close up that part. So here on the machine is just the part I call the zip space, which is the part that will enable us to wear this hoop skirt and trying to finish up. So I'll just go ahead and fold it in once and just finished up that edge. So we are done. And the next thing we are going to do is to sew the upper piece where we are going to pass our rope. So for the upper piece, I'm still using 1.5 inch width, okay, of my strip. So this is how I'm going to pipe it. I'll fold in half an inch and turn right side to wrong side. So I will stitch right side to wrong side and then fold it and top stitch on it, okay? So of course, I'll still show you how to go about it. So right here on the machine, I'm going to fold in half an inch and I'm going to place this half an inch right side to the wrong side and then I'll begin to stitch half an inch all the way to the other end. So by the time I get to the other end too, I'll also cut off half an inch. So I want you to watch to see how I'm cutting the half an inch. I'll cut the half an inch off and then I'm going to fold in that half an inch in and then I'm going to stitch half an inch and back stitch. Then I'll go, go back to that other end we started and I'm going to fold it in. You can see how I'm folding it in. I'll fold half an inch first and then place it on the hoop skirt and top stitch. So I'll just run my top stitches on top of it and that is where we are going to pass our rope to hold onto our waist. So here, I've come to the end of that part. And you can see how neat is looking right there. So I'll just go ahead and pass my rope. So I'm using a bias strip for that part anyway. So you can use anything of your choice. So I'm using bias. So I'll just get a long bias strip. So it can be 60 inches in length. So I would like us to pass the, the rope on the waistline. So before that, I want to hem the down piece just to finish up the down piece very well. So here, I just fold it in and I stitch the down piece. And you can see how clean and neat is looking right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is to pass the bias I was talking about. Before we pass our boning, I would like us to finish up with the bias. So it will be very easy for us to pass our boning. So I'll go into that space which we created for the rope on the waistline i'm using my bias 60 inches length and i'll use my safety pin pass in through that space i'll pass from all the way right here to the other end of it 
so once i get to the other end of it this is what i got so i'll just go ahead and take off my safety pin and tie the bow together so it does not slip in you tight it very very tight so right as you see it right here any size any waist size can wear this okay this hoop skirt can be worn by any waist size so i've tied it and this is what it looks like after i'm done tying so we can just take it to our waist and tie it appropriately on the waist when we wear it so the next stage is to start passing our boning channels on these spaces so if you are passing this boning channel i will advise you to start from the down down the biggest part of it to pass so my boning channel I'm still going to calculate how many boning channels I'm going to use. I'm using half an inch for the width. But for the length of these boning channels, you are going to put together all the calculations you got on your rings. From the first to the fifth ring, this is multiplied by two, I got 600. So this 600, I'm going to divide it by 36 to get the adequate boning channels you require for this project. So if I divide it, I have 16.6, which will give us about 16, which about 17 yards. So I got myself 17 yards of, um, of plastic boning. Please make sure you use the hardest plastic boning and use your lighter to treat the end before you pass it. So I've treated the end and you can see how I'll bring in my hoop skirt right now. So I want to show you the method of passing this a plastic boning into this so you can see how the boning is the way it is bending please pass it the way it's bending as you can see me pass in right here okay don't turn it the other side pass it the way it is bending so it gives you that circle look if you are using a boning or else the iron string is better so i've come out to the other end so when you come to the other end this is what you will have so we are going to cut four inches make sure you stretch everything then give four inches gap, four inches gap this way, or you can make it two inches, okay? So it will be able, to, uh, it will be easy to balance well. So I'm treating this other part as well, okay? So I'm going to place the two inches, make it two inches because I actually struggled with this four inches. So just make that overlap in two inches. So I will use my seal tape right now and hold on to it very very well okay don't max it too much only one maxing is okay but make sure you cover the two inches okay so you don't give volume you don't give volume to that space because we already created half an inch space right there so i realized i max too much so that is why i'm advising not to max too much so you don't have issues passing this boning into the channel so one one maxing is just okay so now i'm going to push it into the casing okay i'm going to push it into the casing like that and this is what i got at the end of the day so you just try and close it up very very well as you see me do right here so after that i'm going to use this method to Push in all the bonings to the fifth ring. La la. This is what we got. And that is how to go about your hoop skirt. Okay. Which you saw at the beginning of this video. So this beautiful hoop skirt can be used to wear any ball gown, any ball dress. If you want it to have a fluffy big look. So thank you very much for coming to this tutorial. And I believe this class was helpful to you. Please kindly subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Thank you for coming. Bye.